Good afternoon, District Dialogue. My name is Commissioner Kelly Robinson. I welcome you to our show. This is absolutely going to be an exciting show because this is our very first show of 2020. Think about it, we're already in 2020. Um, as we film this, we haven't quite gone into Christmas yet, but by the time you see this, we've already turned into basically a new era. I'm gonna spend some time and talk about what does it mean to move into a new era. 2020 for Douglas County means our 150th birthday. In 1870, we were founded by the state legislator. And here we are celebrating 150 years, which means that we're on a path to one, acknowledge our past, but to embrace our future. This is a time for reflection, but also projection. You know, it's been an interesting, you know, past three years in essence, as I came back into office for my third term. Uh, we've done the very things that we said we would do for District 2. We said we would beautify. We said we would expand transportation. We said we would focus on mental health, which we've done. Uh, we've grown our CSB, our Community Service Board. We've expanded our current contribution for, for what I want to call health care from 2% up to 10%, better than the state's average. Right? That's something to be proud of. Um, our transportation system, as you know, by this time is probably in its sixth month. We're doing well with the Riverside, which is one of the areas we want to continue to focus on growing. We also have our, what we want to call our east-west um, connector all the way across that connects us to the HE homes um, via the number 20 at, um, in Cobb County. And so we're doing some great things with our bus system, but again, it's the beginning. We haven't quite gotten to our first year, but again, that's because you asked for it. Obviously, we're still focusing on resurfacing. That's something that obviously I've been a big proponent of. This past year, we focused on and fi finally realized how much it would it cost to resurface every road in the county. Anybody got a guess? In my last town hall, we actually posed that question. We had our, um, what we call a director of transportation there, Miguel Valentin, and he made the following comment after I asked the question, which is based on all the roads, all the subdivisions, all the small roads, big roads, how much would it cost to repave every road somewhere between 150 and $200 million. Now you may say, well, what, what, what does that mean? Well, you think about our prior SPLOS, not the current SPLOS, to build that current jail we had, it was $150 million. But the land, for everything that's associated with it, it's 150. So we did that 10 years ago, right? So 10 years ago, we built a jail for $150 million. I could have took that same amount of money, as opposed to making 800 people comfortable, I could have taken care of 80,000 people who drive and resurface every road, every cul-de-sac in the county. And what I'm speaking to is a point of priorities. The past is the past, but we're going forward. That's important. Your input has always been important for us, obviously, as we, you know, again, move beyond transportation and health care, which are important. We also believe that economic development is important. And as you know, for the past three years, we really knocked it out of part. I've got to thank um, Madam Chair and, of course, Chris Pumphrey, our Director of Economic Development, who have just basically been rock stars um, since, um, obviously, coming to office in 19, we went in 2017. We've, what, amassed right around $4.6 billion. That's greater than Mercedes-Benz and SunTrust Plaza combined. I need you all to think about this. For SunTrust Plaza, was roughly about $900 million. Mercedes-Benz Stadium is $1.2 billion. That's what, right around $2 billion. Douglas County has had economic growth of $4.5 billion. Better than Metro. Better than the billionaires over there to the, what we want to call the East. We've held our own, right? We, we've made our environment very attractive. We've changed the atmosphere. We've worked on our staff, making sure that they work with people who want to invest in the county. And we're going to come back to in, in a minute. We've changed the rules here. It's acknowledged that Douglas County for the past 150 years has, has, has done it a certain way, but we've, we've outgrown that way. We've shifted. We're now trying to create an environment that lets everybody know that it's good to do business with Douglas and in Douglas. Which is gonna bring me to my last point um, in the new year, which is we can't just be about big business. It's also we have to look out for, we won't call little guys, but those guys that we know that are just as important. You guys know I always support and focus on the underdog. And that's key. In other words, their voice matters just as much as that big guy. You know, I hear all your cries, all your smiles, and it's important for me to advocate for that. So I, I've heard you in these past um, three years. Again, we've got a fantastic year coming up. I'm gonna get more into that in a minute, but as a matter of fact, stay tuned. When we come back from our break, we're gonna come to a very new special location on Thornton Road, a CIRA.
I'll tell you more about it. Be right back. Welcome back, District Dialogue. Commissioner Kelly Robinson here. And I'm right here with a Sarah right here on Thornton Road, 230 Thornton Road. And I've got a couple of special guests here. And I'm going to allow them to introduce themselves. My name is Brian Tesmer. And I'm Laquan Big Nichols. Gentlemen, welcome. Welcome. Okay, appreciate it. Douglas County, we welcome you. So, so we're going to get right into this. This is something very special. We want you to tell our story. I came in my opening uh, monologues focusing on what we're going to call small business. So yep. tell me a little bit about where, what am I in right now, a Sierra. Uh, so a Sierra is a, what we like to call a cigar lounge. Um, a lot of people get it confused. It's, it's not a bar atmosphere. It's more of a, a very, uh, I'd like to say, warm and inviting place for the community to frequent that might enjoy uh, top-notch cigars as well as fine cuisine and uh, we have a full bar of course um, but it's a family-owned business okay. we uh, we started it out of the passion and love for fine cigars okay. and uh, kind of branched out into the into the food uh, piece to it and of course the, the bar aspect uh, but we're just here and excited to be part of the community and uh, we appreciate all of the all the assistance you guys have given us to, to get to this point I know it's a uh, it's kind of a uh, a roll of the dice for for the county to take allowing us to do this and and we really appreciate it we so. appreciate it thank thank you brian but brian, uh, wait a minute but, but when you say we family owned business well, who's the we so my sister and i okay. uh started this business we've been in several businesses together previously okay. uh, and we kind of rolled out of one business into this business together yeah. and uh we've been not only I guess brother and sister, but she's my best friend as well. Okay. So we uh, we don't always see eye to eye, okay. but but we always love what's, each other. What's your name? And Melissa. Melissa. Yeah. Melissa. Okay. Yep. Very good. Very good. Well, again, congratulations and oh, welcome to so Douglas much. County. Appreciate but before I dig deeper into that, well, tell me, you said it's not quite a bar. Mm -hmm. you know, as you know, bars are really not loud in Douglas County. Right. For, for, but for the citizens, no, we 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 just we don't have that part of the code. But yet. Um, somewhere between a bar and a restaurant is what we call a lounge. Correct. So uh, I think uh, people get kind of scared from the, uh, the idea of a bar because with bar comes trouble, right? Right. Um, and we are not that. Okay. Uh, we, are, we are, I like to say, a family establishment, even though minors are not allowed. But right. we have a bunch of husbands and wives and brothers and sisters and everybody that comes and frequents us we have a, a huge book of regulars already and we've only been open a, a fraction of time um, so we like to think of ourselves as a family atmosphere even though minors aren't allowed of course we'll stay there when you said okay you've been open a few weeks when did you officially open october 21st october 21st all yeah. right very good so on october 21st you've opened so really a couple of months give or take yeah our grand opening and stuff. So now here we are, um, somewhere between uh, a bar and a restaurant. You've got this lounge concept. Yeah. Why did you pick Douglas? Well, uh, don't get me wrong, but but we want we want the citizens. We want them to hear. Absolutely. Why, so why, why it's kind of this is kind of a multifaceted answer. Uh, number one, we knew we didn't want to be in the proper city proper of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little too big for us. It's. Um, it's not, it doesn't fit our, I guess, wants as far as, uh, number one, uh, I, get, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. Uh, we wanted a homely feel. We mm -hmm. wanted a warm atmosphere that people felt, felt comfortable in. And in the city, it's like, it's the hustle and bustle. There's a constant mm -hmm. move and shake. And, you know, we wanted something a little more reserved. Yes. Um, and number two, uh, I live very close to here. Okay. So... I wanted something that was close to home, and I knew that the Thornton Road corridor had a massive amount of um, people that traveled it daily. Yes. So I tried to build my business smart and put it where people could see us. Yes. Um, and also the ease of use when trying to permit and get the approvals and all that, I knew uh, through previous uh, businesses that it had been a headache in the city of Atlanta mm -hmm. and I wanted to give another smaller entity an opportunity um, to do business with me 
Very good. And so here we are. So here you are. Yeah. Very good. Well, again, we welcome you. Again, because I'm always interested in why did somebody pick Douglas versus some other place. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe that we are worth it. We believe that we've created the right atmosphere to allow people to know that we're open for business. We're not cumbersome. Yep. Um, if you run into a hiccup, like with most places that relates to permitting, we'll work through it. Yep. And we appreciate you for being here. Um, so let's, let's, let's keep shifting and stuff. So you talked about you have um, a humidor? I do. I have right. a, a large humidor that's uh, fully stocked with just about 230 different cigar brands. Okay. Um, so no matter what your palate tells you, we probably have something that'll fit it, right. um, as well as the full bar. Yes. Um, and we do retail sales of cigars, so you even if you don't stay with us to smoke it, you can come in and grab your cigar for you or your loved one, and um, we'll put it in a bag for you and send it with you. Okay. Um, okay. I'll, Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, 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 but you bring up a good point. You've got a humidor, full stop. Now, Douglas County, there are other, low, um, I guess, one of Sigovar sellers. Right. What's your unique selling point? Why, why are you different than everybody else here already? I think we're the only people, and c correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're the only people in Douglas County that have a full kitchen, a full bar, and a fully stocked humidor that can smoke on premises. Is that correct? Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think that... In, and that was one of the challenges of, of opening this is, is convincing Douglas County to open their minds to the idea of that. And I wanted to applaud you and the rest of the county for allowing us the opportunity to show you our vision and uh, you supporting our vision and allowing us to do this. And I hope that we fulfilled all the promises that we made to you guys. As a, uh, as a community, and we will continue to do that as best as we can. It, we appreciate that. And again, we, it was uh, during our planning and zoning process, we did have to make accommodation in our code session. We, we want to acknowledge. But at the same point, we could perceive that you're going to bring a certain level of excellence to us. Sometimes you can just read some of the citizens who, or the applicants, as we call them, and we have to make judgment calls. And so my, my peers pretty much looked at me and said, well, if that's what you want in your district, and I was like, absolutely. <laughs> and here we are in the results of it, because again, to your point, we do have other establishments in the county, but I thought that you saw that you had a niche. Mm -hmm. I saw the quality of the operation that you were gonna bring. And so to that point, um, obviously it's great to have the bricks and mortar, but let's, let's talk about the people. So we've got another guest here. Let's, who else is here? Laquan, <laughs> introduce him and your role here. So, so Laquan is uh, my general manager. Okay. He's, before that, I should have said this first, he's a dear friend of mine and we've known each other for years. Very good. And um, he is passionate about the cigar industry as well as I am. Yes. Um, and he's got a, a great business mind on his shoulders. Yes. So I said to myself, uh, I need help. Right. And the first one, person that popped up in my head was Laquan. All right. So here he is. Very good. <laughs> so, look, so Laquan, so far, so here you are from an operational perspective. Um, How's the traffic coming? How, how has it come so far? I mean, early reports. So far, so good. Um, the great thing about being at 230 Thornton is the fact that we have great visibility. And with visibility, people are able to stop by, check out the location, buy a few cigars, as Brian said, whether they stay or decide to leave, they are amazed um, at what we have here, which is a great thing. Um, people. Love the fact that we have a full kitchen, have a full bar. Um, they commend us on our decor. Yes. Um, so, so far so good. So far so good, very good. And how large, if you don't mind sharing square footage, what, what did this used to be? I mean, cause this is curious, because people may ask the question like, we're yeah. at on Thornton Road, so give them, give them a landmark, where, where are we? So this uh, is a 2,600 square foot space, including the kitchen and everything. Um, it used to be Johnny's Pizza. It's just down the road from Harley Davidson of Atlanta. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it took us six months to renovate and get it to look like it does now. Yeah. Um, it was fun, but also very, very challenging because uh, converting your thoughts into actual brick and mortar space is, is difficult at some times. Yes. Uh, but we are thrilled with the way it turned out. Uh, it's exactly what we wanted. Uh, it's exactly what the customers enjoy because every time they come in, they say, how did you pull this off? How did, how did you make right. it look like this? Right. Um, so uh, we're getting a great response from the community and we're just glad to be here. And you bring up a good point. When, you know, when I, I, I travel a lot, I, I go to a lot of different places around the world and stuff. But when mm -hmm. I come home, I want to be home. 
Right. All right. And so one of the things that my question to you is really when you think about it, um, in addition to the atmosphere that you created, mm -hmm. it, it's always about high touch when mm -hmm. it comes down to the people. Right. All right. Talk to me about, you know, even your, your I, I hear you've got a chef, but you know, who else it works here and how much is your, you know, how big is your staff and those people who actually contact, you know, come in contact with the customer right yeah. there at a point of contact. So we employ about 20 people okay. all together, yeah. um, and that's front of the house and back of the house. Yeah. Um, as in any business, staffing is always a challenge, right? Um, but we've been blessed enough to have some great people here and um, a lot of local people. Okay. So, and hopefully the- Local Douglas? Yes, okay. pe people that live a mile from here. Very right? good, all right. Um, so, and hopefully we'll continue to keep employ those people and bring some more new fresh faces on with us as well. Um, but good. I, uh, yeah, that's that's it. About twenty employees all together, and we love all of them. Very so, good. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to be coming back right in a minute here. We're going to get into the, some some special things. We're going to get into that kitchen because they've got a very very unique, yes. I want to say, uh, menu mm -hmm. tapas. And I want to learn what tapas is in a minute. We'll be right back. District Dialogue, Commissioner Kelly Robinson. Welcome to District Dialogue. I'm Commissioner Kelly Robinson, and we're at the, the tail end of this particular episode. Uh, again, I'm here with the owners of Asira. I've got Brian here with me, and we've got a special guest that's arrived, our chef. Tell me your name. Uh, Courtney West. Courtney West. Welcome, Courtney. So we were Thank just you. talking to our citizens, and we, we were curious, and I'm very curious, what is tapas? Tapas is a small version of our, our dishes right here. Okay. Um, is it is it more of a healthy or is it what, what is it something special about it uh yes yes uh, it's just you know we have um uh, basically on the menu uh we have like you know, one vegetarian yes uh, dish and um most of our stuff is pretty natural and organic very good okay well what do we have here why don't you take us through sort of this this set of dishes here for the for the audience yeah first here's our famous uh crab fried green tomatoes right here uh, it's kind of mixed in uh, southern style, uh, classic southern style. Mm -hmm. We have right here uh, our shrimp, crawfish and shrimp grits right here. Mm -hmm. um, we have our classic uh, barbecue wings right here. Ooh, very good. So these are very different. So, all right, so you talked about wings, which tends to be a more of a traditional within uh, cigar lounges. Any different flavors yes. or? Yeah, we have a variety of flavors. We have jerk sauce. Uh, we have uh, uh, teriyaki. We have uh, classic lemon pepper okay. as well. Okay, and then I heard what crawfish and grits. Yes, sir. Oh boy, that's that's my my little twist. Yeah, so yeah. All right. So tell me about yeah. that. How do we arrive at that one? Uh, something just I created. Just uh, I just thought of the flavor and the taste, and I just, you know, made it happen. Right, right. Okay. So crawfish and grits. That sounds good. And the last one you had is is um, crab and what is it? Crab fried crab, green tomatoes. Crab fried yeah, green crab, tomatoes. Uh -huh. Crab fried green tomatoes. Ladies, that probably is good for you guys. Okay. <laughs> all right. So again. So are we supposed to try this, or you just got this for staging? Sure, it's, it's, it's ready to go, it's, ready to hot. it's hot. Ready? Okay, yeah. very good. Well, District Dialogue, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna end on this note as I take a bite of one of these <laughs> things. But again, we appreciate you in the new year. This is 2020. This is a time for us to reflect over 150 years, but also to project over our coming 150. Thank you and have a good evening. Again, here from Asura at 230 Thornton Road.